Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well. I was just getting started. I'll introduce myself and I'll let you tell everybody who you are. Well, I'm Dr. Ferndi. I'm Dr. Loom Ferndi. I am a pediatrician and founder of Generational Wellbeing, where I help um, moms to create simple, sustainable, healthy habits for themselves and their children so they can change the narrative from disease to wellness. And I am so honored to be here with Dr. Michelle today, who's going to tell us all about what she's doing. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much for, for inviting me. I'm Dr. Michelle Quirk. I'm a pediatrician and a run coach, and I'm the founder of Mindful Marathon, where I help make running easy and fun for busy professionals. And I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for joining me here today. So today, I really wanted us to talk about exercising. I know we're a run coach and run is a part of exercising. And really, um, what I found is that exercise, even though we all know all the health benefits of it, there's this, uh, there's so many things that keep people from starting and cons consistently, you know, sticking with the goals for exercise. <laughs> so today, I want us to just talk about our stories, how we started, how you started, and just to demystify that concept of it's so hard and all those limiting beliefs or the mindsets that could be stopping or keeping someone who really wants to and does not know how to start. Yeah, and there are a lot of them, right? <laughs> There's a, right. quite a lot of, uh, of barriers to, to starting and most of them are in our own heads, I would say. <laughs> right. So, and you know, you and I have spoken about this, but I, I was not always a runner. Um, and yeah, I came to the sport maybe a little bit later than some, like as a kid, I, I struggled to run. And when, when I was growing up, my sport was really dance, but I, I was not, um, you know, a competitive athlete in soccer or anything like that. And I certainly was not a very good runner. <laughs> um, okay. and, uh, yeah, I, I started the sport and quit the sport like many times over the years and tried to pick it up, you know, in medical school and residency and was on again, off again. And, um, I found it and what we can talk about what made it stick, but, about 10 years ago, um, I, I'd finished my residency, started a new job, moved to a new place. There were a lot of stressors. We'll, we'll just leave it at that. Um, a lot of stressors. And uh, my dad was, was diagnosed with cancer at that time. And I felt, you know, it was a very hard time. And here I was at work telling my patients and my families to take care of themselves and exercise and eat well and get enough sleep. And here I was not doing all of the things that I was, you know, telling them that they should do. <laughs> and right. so, you know, I decided then that something needed to change. And I laced up my, my sneakers and I just decided, you know, this time I'm going to start small. I'm just going to try to do, you know, five, 10 minutes around the block a few times a week because all of the other times I had started um, led to, to me quitting and, and feeling defeat. So <laughs> that's how I started. Um, and things sort of took off from there. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, starting small, I think, you know, it's, it's really huge, because when you start small, it's easier in your mind to yeah. you can pretty much visualize it in your mind when you're starting small, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah. And, and it's not okay. so daunting, right? Like, it, I can, I can lace up my sneakers and give myself 10 minutes. And I also said, you know, if I can't run the whole way, it's fine. I'll, I'll walk some, I'll run some. I was just giving myself a little bit more grace than I had in the past and trying to get a little bit away from that, you know, it has to be all or none, right? <laughs> like right. We, need, we want to lace up our sneakers and just go three miles when we have not been trained to do that. Right, right. And I, I would say when I started myself uh, a few years ago, it was because my daughter's cheerleading team coach actually invited the parents to run a 20 mile for over a month. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I remember when I started, I was because we had all the other parents there, we could see how many miles. So I kind of started a bit a bit late. And what I attempted to do was trying to catch up with the other moms. So I started mm -hmm. out, you know, just going at it. But after that first run, I came back just 
in pain. My <laughs> hips were hurting. I couldn't walk through. Oh, no. Stuff. So, <laughs> so starting small is really good. But how do you typically coach your clients, say, once they're starting with someone like me who's starting mm -hmm. and trying to just go at it? Uh, I know with that, if I didn't have that community with me, I probably would have just stopped. Like, this is too hard. I'm hurting. My knees hurt. How would you coach someone through that? Yeah, there, there's a few things. I think um, all, of the, all of the things I'm about to say fall under the bucket of start low and go slow. Right. <laughs> so, you know, we all, um, we want, we expect a lot of ourselves and we want quick results. <laughs> we want, you know, overnight results. And so, you know, give yourself time and you don't, you don't have to start out with, with anything crazy. Like you can give yourself five or 10 minutes a few times a week and what you're looking to do is really um, you want to tap into how you feel while you're out there. So I get a lot of people started using a run walk method. Um, Jeff Galloway, he is um, a wonderful human, a wonderful run coach. Um, he's an Olympian. Look him up. He, um, he does run walk intervals with, with his clients. And um, it's, a, it's a wonderful technique for those just getting started and for, um, for runners who've been running a long time, coming back from injury, um, older people, like really it's a wonderful method to um, get started in the sport and stay in the sport injury free. So I do a lot of run walk intervals and figuring out you know, the, the appropriate interval for, for each client so that our effort is not so, so hard. Like most people think, okay, run, I'm just going to go out there like I'm running away from someone. <laughs> Someone's chasing me, a bear is coming, I don't know. But we want, <laughs> we want to be, you know, at a nice, at a pace that we can sustain for a longer period of time. And that will help so that, you know, all of the things don't hurt and you don't feel so out of breath and you're not red in the face, all of those. <laughs> all right. And so you did mention like tuning into your body, right? And listening to the wisdom of what your body's telling you. Mm -hmm. what, what kind of things would you do? Because I, for one, when I'm running, sometimes I'll listen to, I'll, I'll put music on to kind of mm -hmm. distract me from the process. So I'm just going. <laughs> My goal is to, you know, make it to that mile. So, but tuning in, how do I then get away from that goal from I have to run the mile to tuning in to listening in. Yeah, so um, I used to also run a lot with headphones and I would try to tune out. But as, as I've gone along here, I've learned that it's, it's actually better to tune in and unplug. <laughs> and so um, what I talk about with my clients is a level of effort scale. And so what it, we almost do, if you're familiar with like a body scan technique, we kind of do that on the run and we go head to toe and it's a way to, I mean, the biggest thing really is like, how is my breathing? Um, is my pace too fast? I'm constantly asking myself, like, how do I feel? How's my effort? And we grade it on a scale of one to 10, like the pain scale. And one is your, your brisk walk. Like you're out there for a nice brisk walk. 10 would be the bear is chasing you, you know, down the, the end of the mile and you're going to fall over at the end. So we don't want to go... <laughs> You don't want to go to 10. <laughs> Where, right. You know, when you start out, a, a nice level of effort is maybe like a two or three. It's very hard. It's very hard when you first start out to like convince yourself, am I doing enough? Like, is this, <laughs> am I supposed to feel, you know, this or that? And so it's, it's a constant um, give and take of asking yourself, how is my breathing? Um, how are my footfalls? Are they light? Are they heavy? Um, is my heart beating, you know, too fast? Am I getting red in the face? Am I huffing and puffing? Like huffing and puffing is, is a big one. So yeah, you want to keep your level of effort on the lower end of the scale. Don't go toward 10. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> and <laughs> amazing. Yes. But I know we're talking about running now. How can we incorporate this into other, um, I mean, there's, we're talking about busy moms here who have <laughs> work and kids and stuff. How can we incorporate maybe even like the slow walking or the running into their, in their daily routine, which does <laughs> not seem to be like an added task. Go, oh, I have to go running now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, finding finding the time is is an obstacle um, for all of us. Like we all lead very, very busy lives. And 
if you don't set aside the time for it, it probably, it probably won't happen. So the technique I like to use is to um, sit with my calendar, my planner on the weekend and look at the, the week ahead. And, you know, we have in all the things that, where I have to be, you know, my, my clinical job, my coaching calls, um, doctor's appointments, all of that, those are all in the calendar. And I look at the schedule and say, okay, which for me, you know, which days am I going to do my runs this week? Which day am I going to hop on the bike? For people just starting out, look at where you can give yourself five or 10 minutes. And I think the easiest place to find that for most people <laughs> is either, um, you know, morning or evening in the time that you're on social media. I'll just <laughs> be honest. Right. That many people will scroll on Facebook or Instagram in the morning or the evening. Um, right. And if you set yourself a timer, you know, it probably is more than five or 10 minutes that you're spending there. So could you could you subtract five minutes from that and and give it to the, the exercise bucket? Um, that is usually a, an easy place to find it. Um, All right. Yeah, I have one more, too. The other thing is you can work it into work it into your schedule of things you're already doing. So I have a friend who has been on a run streak for over a year. So that means she's been running every day for over right. a year. <laughs> wow. And she has three boys. And, you know, part of it for her is, you know, maybe after she drops the boys at school, she will leave from the school parking lot and get her workout in then. Or, you know, right before she picks them up in the afternoon, she will get it in then. So you can get a little bit creative. Um, you know, with that said, sometimes she says that her shower gets pushed, you know, a little further <laughs> till the end of the day. Um, but yeah, so you can, you can get creative, but it does take a little bit of thought ahead of time mm -hmm. to see where you can fit it. And if you think about it and you write it down and you, you know, you treat it the same way you would treat it as your, your other obligations, your job, your family, date, night, whatever it is, um, if, you, if you make everything, you know, equal, that this is, this is important for your health, for your self-care, for your mental health, um, you, you're much more likely to do it. Right. And it, it is so rewarding, too. And I think that to consistently do it with the time that you're putting in, uh, the mental clarity of, you know, once you start really running and exercising, it's amazing that it, you end up saving time. I know for me, when I started being consistent, uh, the tasks, the things that used to take me maybe like an hour to do, I was able to accomplish those tasks in a shorter amount of time. So overall, it's, it's so rewarding and you are saving time, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think too, you know, all of the benefits that we, we haven't even touched on really, but with helping your sleep, um, like yeah. being able to fall asleep more easily and quickly. So you're, you're ending up saving time there or maybe giving yourself back um, some extra time asleep, which <laughs> can only help. Right. All right. Definitely. And, and it doesn't really have to be, you don't need a gym membership. You don't need equipment. You need to, to you know, to your sneakers, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think um, the, the one piece of equipment I have to recommend would be getting a good pair of running sneakers. But other than that, you really, yeah, running is, um, it can be a minimalist sport if, if you want it to be. And as you get into it um, further, of course, there are many gadgets and gizmos and fun things. But <laughs> when you first start, really um, investing in a good pair of running sneakers if you take yourself to your uh, local running store if you have one um, and get get your yourself fitted for a pair of running sneakers so that you're in the right the right sneakers that will go a very long way <laughs> yeah and also to kind of prevent injuries too because I know when I started my first few runs I didn't have the the right gears and I could tell I had like ankle pain but once I made that step to get the right shoes the running is easier. I mean, it's, it's lighter on your fit and it prevents the knee injury or the, the ankle pain or the knee pain that some may experience when, um, when running or when with uh, any kind of exercise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what um, an important thing is if you look in your closet and 
you you have an old pair in there. They may work for, you know, today <laughs> if you want to go out today. But just, um, you know, put it on your schedule to go to the running store because your body changes over time. And maybe since the last time you wore those, you, you may have had an injury in between. Um, your shape may have changed. So things do change over time. And if you have a fresh pair of sneakers, um, they do... They do wear out, so um, a pair of sneakers is good for about, you know, 300 to 500 miles. So I start to, you know, you want to keep track of how many miles you're putting on the sneaker. And you can always tell, like, whenever I go and get a new pair, if I put the old pair on one foot and the new pair on the other, it, oh, it's just a beautiful feeling when you step into the new ones, all the cushion. <laughs> it's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah and the old one is like evidence of accomplishment too like i did yes. it you know yes. like the mouse i put in my mouth it's like so you know uh rewarding <laughs> yes yes and then so, and then you can get the bright new ones that feel like a cloud on your foot <laughs> right right and now that we're talking about in, uh, uh, injury prevention with you know getting the right pair of gears uh, what are the tips would you probably provide to you know what someone who maybe is considering doing is but has never has not exercised in a while and is saying oh I really want to get started what kind of things should they you know think about or consider to keep themselves safe where they don't get injured yeah, I think um, keeping keeping that adage in mind, start low and go slow, yeah. um, you know, talk, clear it with your doctor first, right? Clear, <laughs> clear that you're, you're able to run. And, uh, you know, if you have any existing injuries or recent injuries, um, make sure that all of those are healed up before you start a new running routine. But if you've been cleared and you have your new pair of sneakers, um, the biggest thing I can say is to start, start small and start with more walking than running <laughs> and build up very slowly. So this is where, um, you know, a training, uh, a training plan or a running coach can be very helpful just so that you have the right titration upward. A lot of people do too much too soon and, and get hurt. So the name of the game is starting low, going slow, a pace that is appropriate for you. And um, when we talk about listening to the body, if anything, you know, a few aches and pains and soreness may come up, right, when you first start out. So you want to give yourself time off in between each of your workouts. So maybe you don't run every day, right? Like maybe you don't start the run streak like my, my friend Heather. <laughs> but, you know, maybe three times a week so that you have days off of recovery in there. And on your days off of running, maybe you, you do other things you enjoy, walking, cycling, yoga, whatever it is. So kind of mixing it up. And giving yourself appropriate rest and recovery in between your workouts will go a long way. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And and running, I know we're talking about, but if running is not your thing, dancing may be it. It's just the same concept really built into any other kind of exercise or any kind of uh, activity that suits you, your, your style, or your personality. But just starting slow and building up, really, like you said, that way you can really truly enjoy it because if it's not enjoyable, you're less likely to continue doing it, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's really why I quit so many times before because I, yeah, I would try and go and run, <laughs> you know, I would try to run three miles. Like I would think I should be able to run three miles. I'll just go and do it and then come back feeling defeated that that it didn't feel good and it hurt and I was out of breath and felt out of shape. And then I thought, okay, you know, I'm not a runner. It's not for me. And I would hang up my sneakers for another year. But there, there is hope, okay? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, absolutely. I mean, just start and, you know, even if you – fall down or you stop at some point you can just go right back and start again and just make it enjoyable make it fun and rewarding and there's so many rewards to whether it's running walking outside exercising right yeah yeah and i would encourage you to you know get your family get your friends involved so that you do have that sense of community and that sense of support and so everybody is working toward maybe you're working toward different goals but you're working together toward toward something, right? And toward family fitness, which is really great. <laughs> yeah, amazing. And like I said, when I started with mine, it was because of the parents and my, my daughter's uh, cheerleading team, because mm -hmm. we could see um, 
each other's miles how you're running it's just like encouraging you to yeah. like okay i got to do my miles today so community and accountability really um helps you to kind of stay consistent as well yeah yeah and if anyone has um a, a great app it's called strava um there are lots of communities in there and you're more than welcome to come over and check out the mindful marathon group we give a lot of high fives there's a lot of encouragement I encourage people to post pictures of their runs outside also some interesting you know wildlife <laughs> and things like that um, right yes, we just give each other a lot of high fives <laughs> awesome so tell us more about the mindful marathon though yeah yeah so i i coach um i have a set of one on one clients who i coach and i just started um a group program for beginners called ready set run this is our first week Um and I am planning to offer that again probably in the fall. We'll we'll see. <laughs> okay. But uh what what's coming up here on deck is a spring virtual 5K and I'm very excited about that. Um I'm just finalizing some details for the medals, but um but it's going to be fun. It's probably the first week of May, mark your calendar, but I will be um talking about that very soon. We had our first one in the fall and it was a smashing success and people have been asking when is the next one. So I didn't right? want to wait until fall. <laughs> so we're going to do the spring one. <laughs> awesome. Looking forward to it. So if someone really wants to join you, how can they find you? Is it just Oh yeah, you know, over on Instagram, um since you're here, right? It's at @mindful.marathon. Um okay. and I'm also on Facebook as myself, Michelle Quirk or the business page is Mindful Marathon. or and you can find all of the links to the website um I have a YouTube channel of helpful videos and interviews with other runners and just inspiring inspiring humans um and all of the links are are in the bio the link in the bio Amazing. Thank you Dr. Michelle. I'm looking forward to it and I will be signing up for that 5K run too cuz you know that community <laughs> is amazing. So, thank you all for listening today and again you can follow me on uh, Instagram so at Dr. Lum MD for more uh topics like this. Thank you Dr. Michelle. Oh, thanks so much for having me and thanks everyone for being here. <laughs> thank you. Mm -hmm.